Hi, I am Chris White, Director of Programming and Production at American Documentary POV. I am thrilled to be talking today with Deanne Borchet to talk about her newest film that's going to be on POV this season uh, in the matter of Cha Jung-hee. Deanne, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. First Person Plural was your first film that was on POV, and in the matter of Cha Jung-hee is sort of this, the second uh, edition or the second episode of, of this, um, this search in your life. So let's talk a little bit about, about First Person Plural. Remind us a little bit about First Person Plural. Well, the two films, you know, uh, First Person Plural and In the Matter of Cha Jung Hee are, are very personal. First Person Plural is um, a film that, first of all, tells my story of being adopted by this American family, um, Arnold and Abby Borche, um, in Fremont, California. And um, I was adopted by them when I was about eight years old. Um, and. Uh, when they adopted me, um, they thought I was a girl named Cha Jung Hee and that I was an orphan. And um, I grew up thinking that I was Cha Jung Hee as well and that I was an orphan. Um, but then once I grew up, I discovered that I had a birth family in Korea. And so the film follows this journey of discovering my birth family and meeting them and then taking my adoptive parents um, to Korea. Um, for a meeting of the two families. And um, it really explores, I think, my relationship to both families, um, this sort of sense of divided loyalties, divided identities, and um, kind of this paradox of living um, in two different worlds, um, being pulled in two different directions. And then in the matter of Cha Jung Hee? In the matter of Cha Jung Hee, you know, um, I've always been curious and I guess haunted by this identity that was never mine and um, over the years I've Cha Jung Hee has always been in the back of my mind um, she's a girl that I never knew uh, she was someone who apparently was at the orphanage with me but I, I had never met um, and yet I to this day um, have her identity her birth date her um, her name, her legal papers. When I came to the United States, I arrived as Cha Jung Hee. My papers indicated that I was an orphan with no living family in Korea. But there was one problem. I wasn't really Cha Jung Hee. My parents were looking forward to the arrival of their newly adopted daughter. But at the last minute, Cha Jung Hee disappeared from the orphanage. Cha Jung Hee ga, uh, 마침 자기 부모가 나타나서 이제 그 우리한테도 말 없이 그 아이를 하루 밤에 데리고 가버렸어. The social worker decided to send me in her place. She put my picture on her passport, and I was told not to reveal my true identity. Even today. Her birth date is the one that appears on my driver's license and legal documents. She's a stranger who continues to be my legal identity. In the film, essentially I go back to Korea to try to look for her, to kind of put this matter to rest once and for all. And um, so I meet a number of women named Cha Jung Hee and um, through that process explore the history of international adoptions from Korea, uncover the sort of deceptions and lies that took place with it in the process of my adoption and um, also kind of explore memory and amnesia and um, what it means to kind of live someone else's life. I've decided to go back to Korea to look for her. Yes, I'm searching for Cha Jung Hee and I hope to find her. Oh, they published that picture. Yeah. You kind of look like her. I'm not sure. 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 I'm sequences that involve my search for this woman in Korea in combination with more dreamlike sequences shot in Super 8, um, both shot stuff that we shot originally and also my father's home movies in these sort of dreamscape um, 
sequences that explore deeper issues around memory and loss and identity. In the end, you know, it was really about my coming to embrace, um, embrace my life as my own and not as hers. And that this false, this sort of false construct that I had as a, created as a child, that I, that I myself didn't belong in this country. I was only in this country by virtue of being this other person. And therefore, I had no right to belong to my family or to this nation. Um, I think that was ultimately kind of the discovery for me, that I do belong here, that I am here, and that it's my life, not hers. I know in reality I am not her, but my sense of who I am has been held captive to her name and her identity. Who was this girl whose life I have lived? In the matter of Cha Jung He is actually one of three films on, that include the subject of adoption in POV's uh, season this year. How do you feel about a adoption in general, uh, and especially adoption from, from other countries? It's hard because every situation is different. I guess, you know, my feeling about adoption um, is I do think it's, it's best when a child can be raised in a family. and. Um, preferably in, in a family in their native country. Um, in, the, in the case of Korea, I think it's been um, a situation there that um, probably is no longer really necessary and um, should stop. <laughs> That's my feeling about Korea. Um, I think that international adoptions in some cases uh, are often looked at as as um, kind of the first choice in a situation, and I don't think it's the best first choice. Uh, I think when there's opportunities, the first choice ought to be to keep families together. Um, and domestically in any country, if there are opportunities, uh, whether it's a single mother or a single father or a grandmother raising a child, um, to create opportunities within the country to keep those families intact, I think, should be first priority in terms of policy for, the, for those countries and for families in the U.S. who want to help, um, you know, other families or children abroad. Um, that should be the first option. Well, it's a wonderful film, and we're thrilled to have it on POV and to have Deanne back on POV. In the matter of Cha Jung Hee, will be on POV in the summer of 2010. Thank you very much. Thank you.